right in a minute. Oh, there we are. We're live, Enrico. Oh, excellent. Hi, Tom. Hi, Enrico. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to have um, Enrico Puglisi here because I'm, I'm tying one of his patterns, one of his first patterns, I think. And so I, I uh, got, up, got in touch with Enrico and asked if he could come on today and, and walk me through what I'm doing wrong. And so uh, I, I think we'll have some fun with this today. I would say so. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what you what you can do on the other side. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll figure out. We'll figure okay. out. Okay, <laughs> between the two of us, we can figure it out. Oh yeah, that's another that's another problem. That's for sure. So Enrico, um, Enrico is the is the developer of the famous EP fiber, which has grown into many different kinds of fibers and trigger point fibers for for dry flies and, um, you know, a lot, and br lots of brushes and, and different kinds of synthetic materials. Enrico, tell people how you got started in that, um, in that area. I'm going to do this as uh, fast as I can. Um, I started fly fishing with, you know, with trout. You know, I was a trout fishing. In fact, um, the first flies I tied were trout believe it or not. A lot of people don't know that, but I started fishing on the water of Long Island, the Connecticut, like most of these people around here those days. And then I moved up to the Delaware, of course, a different water, different fishery. Was a little bit, little bit more, or should I say, much more challenging up that way. So, and then at some point, this, you know, say someone uh, mentioned to me, saltwater uh, fly fishing in Long Island. It's a saltwater fly fishing in Long Island. So, uh, what did you drink last night, you know? So, and then when he uh, explained to me what was all about the stripers, the bluefish, and those uh, uh, sea trout that we used to have, it, uh, I got quite interested on it because basically where I'm coming from, I fish in salt water and not in fresh water. So got really intrigued to that, and uh, I went. I went, and um, I start to learn, like you know, everybody else. Uh, the flies those days was basically three flies: uh, the lefty, the serious, of course, the clouds and minnow, and the slab side of blue turbary, as you know that. There was uh, no other flies around. Uh, those days for stripers. So I got, and I learned that those are three flies. Uh, it took me time to do it, dealing with the feathers, the bucktails, deer hair, and so forth and so on. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a little challenging, of course. <laughs> and then um, go fishing. And when I um, got my first, uh, you know, bluefish, you know, I get the, the fish, and then, okay, where is my fly? I had only a hook in the, in the mouth over there, right? <laughs> so, oops, what, what is this? You know what I mean? So, uh, and then after that, of course, you know, a couple of more fish later, I say, wait a minute. So, you know, it takes me about 20 minutes to tie one of these flies, you know, when it comes to the slap side and the deceivers. Clouds, as we know, is a little bit more faster. I said, this thing is not going to work for me. Besides the fact that seeing all those bunkers into the water, the profile of the silhouette was not really there. The color was not really there. The movement on the fly was not really there. I mean, don't get me wrong, you'll catch fish, but it was not really f for me. And besides that, if you were doing an oversized flies, you know, especially when you're doing those uh, uh, slap side, which has a, the big of deer hair, the fly, you know, they, they don't sink right away. You have, then you have to add lead into it, and they absorb a lot of water. For me, especially in the beginning, you know, I didn't know how to cast that. I mean, I still don't know how to cast that well. Don't get me wrong. But uh, it, I wasn't missing something. Um, whatever I've been doing in, in my life, always I've, I've been taking that as a challenge. And as everybody knows, I used to be a chef 
And to me, you know, uh, a presentation is more than anything else because ultimately, uh, when you go to the restaurant, you are going to eat with your eyes and not with your mouth, with your palate. That comes after. So it does, if you know, it's pretty much it was the same thing. If it, the fly doesn't really look appealing to the fish, that is something that they want and they're looking for. Uh, yeah, they might they might take it, but it's not when you present it and give it to them what they're looking for. So in reality, that's what happened to me. So I'm start to looking at the alternative. And um, one thing right after the other, I kind of discovered this uh, EP fibers, you know, going back, uh, I would say 1990, if not a uh, little bit earlier than that, 89 or so. That's when I started to uh, messing around with it. It wasn't easy because I didn't understand the fibers. I didn't understand the, the mechanic of the, the construction of the flies. And that took a little bit of time because, you know, you really needed to put all your brain or you know, whatever you've seen in your brain, you have to transfer into the hook. So in the beginning, it was kind of uh, a little bit messy on my side. In fact, if, you know, I don't have it, a single flies that I tied those days, but just to give an idea, um, the amount of fibers I used to put on those uh, flies in the beginning, today I can easily tie three flies, and that's just not an exaggeration. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, and then of course that it took you know years uh, to refine what I started, and little by little, you know, you know, trial and error, like anything else, pretty much, and practicing. Um, that's when I began to understand what those fibers really can do. And what yeah. was the magic of those fibers? And those days, there was no other synthetic ex for the exception of those uh, uh, Ultra Air by uh, H.T. Thompson, if you you know, you well know that. Uh, yeah. the, the Crystal Flash, they just came, came mm -hmm. out those days from airline dubbing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fish Air, which uh, they're still available over here. The Fish Air, they, which mainly they are used for jigs more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. So with those fibers, you, you could not really create the silhouette of the, of the bunk, as we know that. You know, it's, a, it's not an exaggeration of mine saying that, but that's, that's what it is. So, and then, um, you know, it was a matter of time, years, understanding the fibers, and then, you know, talking and... Uh, begging the those uh, those uh, big manufacturers because if you don't order the way you're supposed to order they don't even they don't even look at you they, they, they don't want to waste the time so it was a really a hike for me to end up today i believe we do have a 51 colors that are available uh in the beginning was an r51 i mean yeah <laughs> it took yeah. it took a year so, and then, uh, you know, it, the only flash available those days, well, again, it was the crystal flash. And then... Uh, the and flashable. Fla and flashable. the flashable, of course. Uh, but that, to me, was... Uh, I was uh, towards more using the crystal flash and not the flashable because it was a little bit too much of a flash, you know, the, mm -hmm. the wider profile of the flashable. So I used yeah. one or two strands of that, and I used to use a little bit more crystal flash. And then when the, we, the introduction of the, uh, you know, the, the flash that we have today, uh, that was years later, that what really completed the fly, you know, uh, and basically, you know, today, you know, we have what we have. Uh, in the beginning it was extremely difficult. I have to admit that extremely difficult. Um, the comments I added those days, I can never forget that, you know, uh, what the hell are this uh, Sicilian guy over here in trying to teach us or what? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, synthetic, fly. I mean, look, I agree, you know what I mean? I, I don't have to teach, you know, anything. In fact, my, my philosophy always been, even when I was a chef, you know, you don't teach, you share more than anything else. You know what I mean? 
And when you share, yeah. you make it, people understand what it's all about because you not only share what you're creating or what, you know, you, you're sharing your ideas, but also you're sharing what is out there in, in, into, into the wild, into the nature, you know? So you share what everything is around you. So you share the beauty of the sport, the beauty of the fishery, and, uh, and you do the best you can to nurture that and, uh, and preserving and keep on going, you know? Everybody has a different idea. All the ideas are good. All the ideas are excellent. And as you know, uh, today we have so many good fly tires out there. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's amazing, more, more than unbelievable. And of course, these days they were a little bit lucky than me and you, Tom. That, you know, they have the tools to really come out with cool flies you know and materials but, yeah. yeah because the material is is it's a, it's a handless but i it think does, yeah. i i honestly think that you're you are still one of the most creative tires out there i mean i think you were the first one to take fibers like this and sculpt them into a shape i don't i don't think anyone tied a fly like this I mean, the closest thing I can think of is the old high tie, which was just a bunch of bucktail tied, right? Tied correct. Back. Correct. But yeah. I don't think be, I don't think before you anyone did that folding of fibers and then trimming afterwards that everybody does today. Well, you know, as you know, because you are a master flight tie, you understand that the you know the old pictures. It's not just you know top and bottom, but also is uh, the side, you know, and uh, yeah. more than, you know, it's, it's the side, it's the entire silhouette. And mm -hmm. what I mm -hmm. always, what I say, you know, been keep on telling people all these years, right from the beginning, after I learned myself and I, you know, say that, you know, people, you need to understand about this fiber that in reality, it's not what you see in your head. It's not what you see what a device but it's what you see in the water when the, when the flies, you know, it, that, the fly is totally transformed. The magic of the fly with those fibers, it's once it gets into the water. And believe me, you know, I, I used to scuba diving, you know, when I was, you know, on my young uh, days. Uh, when you see the flies outside the water, it's one thing. But if you go down below the water, is another type. Is another yeah. thing. So yeah. it, it, those things, it, you know, these days we understand better because we have the tools to do that. We have underwater cameras. <clears throat> we have all these gizmos, so it makes it a little bit easier. But those days, uh, we didn't have that. You know, I didn't have that. So I yeah. had to kind of guessing. You know, but and here we are we, today. <laughs> we we better we better start tying and stop talking. There we this go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready okay. to roll. <laughs> so here is here is one that uh, that I tied earlier. This is what they look like. Uh, as Enrico talked about, it's three dimensional. So um, let's take that one out of the vise and and get set up to do a to do a uh, one from scratch. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use a, a SC. Uh, 15 hook. Enrico, I know that you use typically a shorter shank hook and sometimes circle hooks, but um, this is what I had. No, and, that, uh, that, believe it or not, is uh, is one of the best hook to tie the peanut butter. Oh, uh, it is? Okay. Yeah, good. because of the gap uh, on the hook, see, it's a nice and wide, yeah. but, it's a, but it's a very, it's extremely strong. So I got lucky. Uh, nah, you know that was the, the, the right. right. That was the right hook. That was the I right hook. I picked the right hook. Up. I yeah. got lucky. Uh, you right. know, and one and one thing that I would like to point uh, at you, Tom, is uh, the, you know, the the gap on the hook. It really will make the fly uh, killing, you know, proportionally and correct. You know what I mean? Because of the the hook. There you go. So see that. Uh, the the gap it really it, it put the flies on the right position when you started to strip the fly. Okay, good. All right, 
So we are we are in a good start over here. We're a good start. We got a hook and a vice. We're we're getting there, Enrico. Now, um, you typically tie this with monofilament, right? Correct. Is there a reason that you tie it with monofilament? Uh, there is, I believe, uh, three reasons. Okay. Uh, reason number one: uh, the the fibers are synthetic, so the it's a good marriage between the monofilament and the fibers. Uh, number two, it's clear, so it will blend with any colors of the fiber, so you don't have to yeah. guess, okay, what colors am I going to, uh, and, and so forth. And, and the number three is the fact that uh, the yep. diameter I use it, uh, is a, it's a thin diameter, which is a 0 0.06. Yeah, uh, 6, -0. 6, -0. 6 -0. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a thin, so it allows me to give it more... Uh, turns to secure the fibers without bulking the base of the flies himself. Okay. So that's the, re the, the reason why I'm using those. But um, I, I know that Orvis has been out of monofilament thread and people may have had trouble getting it. So um, you can also tie this with standard uh, Absolutely. thread. Absolutely. You know, I'm... I would suggest that to use it in this case so that you're doing the black and purple use of the black threads. Yeah. If, if you do a light flies, like, you know, if you do a gray, gray and white, you use a light gray and you can even use a white in that case and so forth and so on. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you, it doesn't mean that you must tie these flies with the monofilament. You, you know, you, uh, I tell people you tie. Uh, pretty much what you are comfortable with it. I can only suggest to you, and then it's up to you, uh, the rest. Okay. So n the first thing we're going to do is get some flashy stuff tied in, right? Correct. And there are... Uh, I was, I've been tying these with uh, Firefly Flash, uh, which looks like this. But it's not as thin as the EP fiber. I think I'm still going to stick with it. Um, yeah, you this can is, do that. This is what Enrico's talking about, um, his sparkle. And it's a, a slightly thinner material. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this Firefly Flash for now. And I've got some, I've got some prepared over here. Um, I just took two strands and wet them so that they stayed together. I don't like a lot of flash in these flies. Is there no, no need to put a lot of flash on it? You know, in, in my opinion, there is a two different flies. Uh, the flies that uh, you're using, you know, to fool those fish out there, and the flies that pretty much you use it for Christmas, you know I mean? Yeah, <laughs> to decorate the trees. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take a, a, a fairly long strand of this. Okay. And I'm going to wet it again, just to, so it stays together. And I'm going to fold it, fold it on, on the middle, over the, over the monofilament, my thread. Even it out a little bit. You're going to trim this anyway, so it doesn't matter. And just attach that to the shank. I'll get you close up here. So that's where we are now. Here's my flash that looks sticking good. out the end. Okay. So yeah. far, so good. I didn't so screw that part up. No, listen, this is, this is only the beginning. You will see when yeah, you screw yeah. up later on. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, one of, the things, one of the things I did want to talk about is that the, the cool thing about these flies is you can tie them. Here's three peanut butters. Um, you can tie them... Uh, based on the shape of the bait fish and in fact sometimes what i'll do is i'll tie them all wide like this one here really wide like a herring or a bunker and then you can always trim them down if you find bait fish that are that are narrower you can always trim them down uh right in the field or you know go back to your go back to your hotel That's your correct. car 
wherever, and you can trim them down. So you could get, you can really get whatever shape you want. Well, that's a, that's a very good observation, Tom. Uh, that is, uh, I would say, uh, the, one of the main advantage of those flies, uh, meaning, uh, yeah, you have a, let's say you have a three different size or one size oh. with you or two or whatever. I had and, it on the wrong, I had it on the wrong camera. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and yes, uh, always, uh, I, I suggested always a car with you, a comb and a, and a scissor and, uh, you basically when you're in the water, you can do shape and size the way, mm -hmm. you know, whatever is needed, whatever you want. I mean, yep. if you, if you, if you, you know, if you can picture that, I'm sure you can, if you do have a fly tied with feathers and bobtails and deer hair and so forth and so on, marabou, whatever. You do any adjustment that you might do uh, on those flies. The flies are not going to uh, act in the water the way it's supposed to because, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, have to, I don't have to say that, but once you trim those feathers, the action is not there anymore. Once you trim the bobtail, uh, the action is not going to be there anymore. So yeah. the advantage of the, 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 the fibers is right there. You can shape it. You just need yeah. to, do you need to switch it to your hook? No, I need I needed to switch it to the camera, which is what people were probably yelling about. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I did I I had it on the wrong camera when I was talking about these three flies. Okay, but you're not trying to be We're good. Right? No, we're good now. We're good now. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna prepare some EP fiber. I'm gonna get that out of the way. I'm gonna widen this a bit. And we're going to take some, a hunk of black EP fiber, just the traditional EP fiber, the original. And we're going to just take a small amount, about Very that small. much. Yeah, about that much, Enrico? Uh, we'll say yes. And I'm, okay. I'm sure you're going to be removing a few strands out of the bunch anyway. Yeah. So that's the, that's the entire length there. Now I'm going to cut this at about, what, two-thirds of the Correct. thing, right? Two-thirds so should do it. So I'm going to come down about two-thirds, and I'm going to cut it. And I should probably make my other bunches right now. Yeah, right? usually it's a, it's a really good idea to do like a two, two bunches of a black and two bunches of a purple. Yeah. So I'm going to take the same amount. There you roughly, go. Roughly. Sure. And I usually cut this in, what, thirds maybe? Or quarters? What do you think? Um... Uh, you can cut it out in quarters, you know. In quarters. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. One. I'm going to cut it in quarters. This just helps you get a taper as you go to the front of the fly. Correct. Less, tr less trimming. And then, oh, I need a final one. I need a final sparse one, right? For the no, top. you you got enough over there, Tom. Don't bother. All right. All you right. got more okay. than you got more than enough over there. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my purple, which is my belly, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'll put that alongside it. So I'm gonna get the same amount of purple, right? Yep. Maybe this much. Cut that two thirds of the way. So I've got a long one. Hope they don't get mixed up. I'm going to put these off to the side a little bit. And then another bunch. Maybe a little more. And I'll cut these in quarters, roughly quarters. Perfect. So now 
I pretty much got everything tied. I was everything, yeah, pretty much everything done. I'm done. Much, yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to take that longest piece, this piece here, the real long one, and we'll look at it both from a from a little a wide view and a close up view. We'll start with the wide. So I'm going to take this bunch and find the midpoint roughly. Oh, very important. Tapering the ends. And it, I watched Enrico do this. I was going to say, I, want, I was going to say, I want to see when he's going to taper those fibers. Yeah. So tapering the ends is just kind of, just kind of working them. And I watched you do this. You're so good at it. Um, Practice, Tom, practice. Yeah, just kind of gently kind of pull on them so that you taper the ends. So now that now those ends are tapered. And now we're ready to go. So you find the midpoint. And you start on the near side. And take a, two turns usually, Enrico. Two turns. Two turns. And if it rolls a little bit on you, you can kind of pull it in the shape. And then you take, and that stays on the top and the near side of where I, where I am. Let me yeah. go to the closer very, camera very, here. Very, very important. They must stay on the top. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is fold the other bunch around so that it goes on the far side and the top. And then I'm going to just take a couple turns back over those, right? Yep. Two turns. Perfect. Okay. Now this is where a rotary vise is really nice because you're going to be going back and forth. So I'm going to rotate my vise. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the purple on the bottom. So I'm going to take my purple. Before you put the purple fibers on, I, I advance the threads at two turns towards the hook eye. Oh, right. Two turns. Right there. There right you there. go. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm going to taper. Just. I can't do it like you. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, One edge already taped. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. is the? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And this oh. is just, I mean, this is just because it makes it easier to get your final tape. All right. right. It's All just, right. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily, but um, yeah, I do, I do helps, that. Though. Yeah. I, I do that for two reasons. Number one is the, as you say, it will definitely um, uh, helps when it's time to trim the fly. And yeah. number two is, as you progress in the fly, it will give you a better a view of the pattern you really want to mm. put, to, put together. That's so, a, I always that's have a, yeah. I always have a little trouble with the bottom one rolling. So what I do is I'll kind of tweak it back, so make sure it stays on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And on my side, and then I'm going to reach around. And pull that on the other side of the hook. There you go. And two turns. Yep. And then advance, right? Yeah, check the other side, please. Okay. Ah. Uh, there you go. Maybe I'll. There. Okay, so we're looking good. So far, Black so on good. top, purple on the bottom, and now a little more flash, right, on the top. Yeah, a tiny bit, not much. Yeah, a couple more strands. A couple more, yeah, that's all you need. It. Again, this is going to be trimmed, so don't need to worry. Oh, now I need to advance a little more, right? Correct. To, how but about before, right there? Before, before you advance, you might want to put those strands of a flush, and then you will advance. Okay. 
for the second step. Ah, okay. Did you moist now those? Did, did you moist those uh, fibers? Uh, the 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 flush. Tom? No, no, you didn't. Okay, but I can. See, it's not as good as e EP Sparkle, so that's why. Uh, All right, how? You'll do how's that? We, is that good? Yeah, we, good, good. Is that the good spot? Yeah, looks like good. Yeah. Okay. And then. Gonna taper the black, shorter, uh, shorter bunch. Okay, now. but hold on, one, hold on one second. Okay, you are you are missing something. What are you missing before you put the other? Oh, fiber? the goop. <laughs> not the goop. <laughs> not the goop. <laughs> not the goop yet. The zap. The zap. There you go. A drop of zap again. Just a drop. Be careful. Yeah, one drop will do. There you go. And I, and I got this great technique from Enrico. If you use this, if you use this long tube and you touch it with a piece of paper towel, after every time you use it, you never have to close it up. Yeah, it will stay nice and clean. Yeah. And you can just keep using it and it'll stay good. Okay. Now can I tie in my black, Enrico? Yeah, you can go with the black. Right. But make so sure you put on make sure you put on top though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Would I would I screw this up? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Two turns. Oh, I st stuck myself with the super glue. I I should not be allowed to use super glue. Well, one thing you can do is uh, once you put the the drop of the glue, you know, with yeah. a piece of with a piece of paper, you know, paper towel, napkin, anything, you just tab it, and uh, you can dry the excess on that. Oh, okay. All right. So advance a little bit. There. Mm hmm. Okay. And purple. For the bottom. Okay, good enough. And find the midpoint roughly. That rolled a little bit, so I'm going to just pull it back and then fold it over. Uh, Tom, Roger Bird. Yeah. Just asked that, or or suggested that sometime we should demo the paper towel technique, and I totally agree. Okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. I uh, Tom, okay. uh, do you yeah. have a do you have a little brush handy over there, the the figure brush by any chance, or a comb? I do. Brush? Now I let's do. let's just, let's stroke those fibers. Here you go. Uh, let's stroke, stroke the fiber, okay? Yeah, um, and and we'll see where you up to because at this point, uh, you will see uh, if there is any adjustment that we need to, to do on this second okay. uh, step. So this so, is a finger brush. You can use a comb. Uh, you can use a, a dog flea comb or a mustache comb. I really like this finger brush, and. It works really well for these EP flies. Because, uh, do, you know, doing this, uh, uh, combing those uh, fibers, uh, you can see uh, right away if there is a something going wrong in some place. No, there's nothing going wrong, Enrico. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you think? You think we're good? We uh we have a good question, which is from Dr. Drew, and he is asking, what's the inspiration behind naming this peanut butter? Oh, good question. That's Great. <laughs> Well, the name uh, uh, goes back, of course, uh, when my kids, they were really kids, let's put it this way. <laughs> and um, uh, they loved the peanut butter. And uh, to me, it was like to find a name uh, that could easily be remembered and easily be pronounced. And uh, I like peanut butter myself, believe it or not. So, okay, peanut bunker, peanut butter, uh, sounds pretty good. And that's how pretty much the name uh, came out. Oh, I forgot Flash, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't have really worried that much if yeah. you know what I mean, because <clears throat> you really don't need a lot of flash, you know, just a yeah. few strands. But I uh, will super glue it so Roger Bird can see the uh, yep, the, the paper technique. towel tree. It's not, it's not very difficult, Roger. <laughs> you take your, you take your super, your Zappa Gap, and you put a drop on there. Oops. Oh, I just got it. All right, Tom, 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 stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Roger, you just you just take the paper towel and you just blot it. Like so. That's all. There you go. I, I don't know where that other drop went, but let's hope it didn't <laughs> go. <laughs> I, I oh, will. wait. It went on the bobbin. Oh God! I was yes. gonna, I was gonna say that every time <laughs> I put the glue into the when I'm going to glue the fibers, ah. I, al I always move my the, my bobbin away from it because uh, I just learned I just learned something the hard way. The hard way. Oh, well, we, you know, you're not the only one. So that's why, you know, when I say thumbs stop, 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 I was going to say, <laughs> move, move that bobbing away. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick myself to that bobbing. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's full of super glue. Unfortunately, right. when, uh, when the glue goes in, can go out. Yeah. Oh, I have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah, you're, All right. you're, you're doing good. Yeah, but I'm sticking myself to the bobbin. <laughs> well, Tom, next time you will remember, I guarantee you that. Hey, hey, I'm no Enrico Puglisi. What can I say? <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I am putting quite a bit of tension on this, just so people, so just so people um, are aware of that. Well, you know, interesting enough, um, you know, when I when I do demos, demos of all people, the, the main question they tell me is, oh, you know, gee, I cannot use the the threads. I said, what? I mean, the mono thread. I said, why not? So because it breaks on me all the time. I said, but I said, look, you know, if you put the right uh, uh, pressure on it, you will not break. And if you do break the uh, the threads, that means you're putting a lot of pressure, which is not necessarily. He said, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you just, you know, you needed to lash in the fiber because once you put that touch of uh, um, a zap on it, everything stays in place, you know? So it's not really, you know, you don't need it to... To use the thread like when you tie a deer hair, you know, with Kevlar, just to give an idea on it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, am I in about the right place for a ne the next black? Yes, you are. Okay. And oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I'm going to taper this.
just a light touch is what it takes to taper these. And there you go. Same place, right? Yep. And the glue. I am moving my bobbin off to the side. <laughs> Here, let's do a close up. Here. That was a good tip. Okay. Looks now good. Advance. Is this going to be the last purple now? Correct. You think? Okay. Yeah. Same length. Short length. No, no, here. same length. Eh, we'll we'll trim okay. it. So you you know don't don't be that cheap on that. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm worried about it, Enrico. I'm no, worried. no, 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 no. I'm worried about it. <laughs> Taper this. Tom. By the way. If you if you if you tie correctly the peanut butter, let's say black and purple, yeah. Do you know how many how many uh, peanut butter black and purple two out you can do out of one bag of purple and one bag of uh, black? A lot, a lot. What well, what number wise? Can you guess? I it? don't know. I don't have any idea. Uh maybe what fifty. No, now you exaggerated too much. Oh, okay. 20? It will be anywhere from 26 to 28 flies. And I guess you know that because you have a factory that makes these, right? That's correct. <laughs> All right. But nobody's going to buy these anymore because now everybody's going to know how to tie them. Hey, you know... That's a good I think thing. it's time for the. I think it's time for the finger brush too. Looks pretty what good. Yeah, no gaps. It's going together nicely. Yeah, yeah it looks now good this on, is looks good on the side as well. Is this going to be the last black? Yes. Okay. So should this be a a long? Hunk of black or no, just no because because no be the same because it's gonna be okay. trimmed. It's gonna be trimmed, so you really yeah. don't no. Okay. It will be a waste of the fibers, you know. All right. I got lots of fibers. I got the Sicilian that sends me fiber. I got a secret Sicilian. You, you got you have the Sicilian connection, huh? I have this as a connection. <laughs> yeah. And the same on the sides, right? The same. I'm same sorry? spot. Yeah. This, same I tie same. these in the same spot. Okay. Uh -huh. For some reason, I thought the last bunch was supposed to be a longer bunch. No, you'll see. You're okay. going to trim it. You're going to trim it. So. Yeah. I don't know why I got that idea that the last bunch was a longer bunch. So now I'm going to have to kind of start back from the eye just to get up on there. Here, let's go to the close-up. Your camera is very clear, Tom. I can, I, I can see the, a single strand of five is nice and clear. Well, Enrico, we've been doing this for just about a year, and you can't believe uh, the improvement we've gotten. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> sure. It used to be pretty bad. It's, it's, I'm, 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 I'm quite impressed, I have to say that. I mean, There's some can... people watching this that, um, that have been with us since the beginning. I'm just going to even this head out a little bit. Just sure, to... absolutely. Just to make it nice. There. How's that look? You can see it better than I can. Yep. Yeah. It, it looks, looks, it looks good. good. It looks good. All right. Now we're going to whip finish. Now the fun part. Why? Because I like trimming them. Uh... Do 
before you're going to trim it, we're going to put some glue on the head. Okay. Uh, Tom. But before you're going to put this up, I want to I want to share something with you and everybody that is watching right now. Okay. Okay. Can you show me the tip of the, here you go. Can you show me the tip of, of the zap on close up, please? On close up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now grab your scissor. Yeah. Yeah. And cut the tip like a quarter of an inch, but instead to cut straight, you cut that in an angle. Oh, I'm not going to do that with my good scissors. Hang on, let me yeah, get Yeah, use something else. Junky scissors. My potato chip bag opening scissors. Here's uh. I'm not going to I'm not going to show you which ones they are because they're they're a well-known fly company's scissors that I'm not happy with. Like that? There you go. Okay. Now see the now you'll see the difference that it makes. Okay. Do you put Zappagap on the head too? Not epoxy? No, forget you don't I, I don't put epoxy. There's no need for epoxy. Zappagap will do the job. All right. I don't have to worry about my bobbin anymore. got plenty over there okay now you might want to dry the excess with the paper towel you have next to you yeah okay there you go okay and then uh, so after that after that if you really want to put in a some extra strength on top of it you know use it the the hard as a nail that's what i use it i'm not go complicate on it you know what i mean okay so. i'll All do right. that later now you have some fun let's see what kind of fun we can get out of this <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. so that's what it looks like right now And first, we're going to brush it. Correct. And very important, I think, on this fly is that you don't want to you don't want to slick it down and then trim it because you want it to fluff up because it's going to fluff up in the water, and you want to trim it when it's fluffed. That's a good observation uh, because. And, and you mentioned it, you know, uh, majority of the people, that's what they're doing. And then when the fly gets into the water, it's it's open them up. And then, you know, it's not really trimmed the way you really want. Right. So that's what it's, oops, that's what it looks like now. Pretty fuzzy. Yep. And a very important tool here is a, a pair of very sharp, long, like what, four inch scissors. I use a six and a half inch when I do my trimming. Okay, I think these are, I think these are four. Six They'll and do. a half, six yeah. and a half cutting, cutting length or six and a half total length? Total length. Oh, total length, yeah. You got I the got right one, from, you got the right I, one. I got these from you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know so. Because they're my, they're my best trimming scissors. You okay. Know, when we come, you know, you, okay. So. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. First, we want to cut it off to the length we want, right? No, no, don't do that. Yeah. No. Okay. Leave it alone yeah. for now. All right. Just okay. trim it, trim it the way, you know, the way you want it to trim the fly. And then it will deal okay. with the length at the end. All right. How am I doing? So far, so good. I mean, you want you want a long pair of scissors just because you can get a cleaner cut. You can certainly do this with with um, with it's, shorter scissors. It, absolutely, but it's, absolutely. But it's going to make it it's going to make it more difficult. The long scissors are going to make it. It'll make a difference. There is no question about that. It will make yeah. a difference. 
and then you have usually usually it's a little difficult to get it around the bend so you have to come in from one side and then come in from the other and then come in from the front taper it a little bit right down to the That's kind of the shape. That's kind of the shape. Oops. We lost our. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. That's okay. I think we can get it. Yep. Yeah, you have it. Yeah, it, this camera sometimes overheats. So, so now to get the length, I just I just come in. Just come in from the tail and correct. Now you now you decide the length. Yeah. All right. I want it about that long. There you go. And, and I want the top to be a little longer. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean it's uh, a good idea. You... It's a good idea to cut the length at the end when you're sure one hundred percent what you what you really want. And I'm, okay. That's the reason. That's all. And then, do you trim the sides at all? No, not at all. No. Okay, because you want that three. That. To, you want Absolutely. that three dimensional. Want that Absolutely. three dimensional yeah. look. Never touch the side. Okay. Now, now we got to use it to goop. Yeah, now we will use the group. All right, so I have I have a a uh, post-it. Always handy when you're using goop. And I like uh, marine goop. Um, marine goop is I found it really holds eyes well. Oh, we got to do something else first. We gotta pick our eyes. I was gonna say, are we gonna glue? We're gonna glue the what? <laughs> we gotta do some eyes over here. And I guess I'll do. I'll use the EP eyes, which have a stem on them, which you have to cut. But I know Enrico, you like these because that stem goes right to the shank of the hook and That's secures correct. to. That's correct. But we're gonna uh, need to <clears throat> trim them a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to uh, trim them. This is uh, about the eye is a question uh, that people have been uh, asking me forever. Um, you know, why why this this eyes? And, um, and they always tell me it's so difficult to put the eyes on it. There is nothing really difficult in this life. Everything is a matter of practicing. And I explained why I use those eyes. I've been... I've been using those eyes from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, so after almost 30 years, I haven't changed that. And I don't mm -hmm. think I'm going to do that now. Hey, don't get me wrong. You can put any eyes you want it uh, as long you have eyes. You know what I mean? Like uh, Ford used to be. So, you know, you can choose, a, you know, any colors yeah, I, I, as long as I, you, I often <laughs> and, I often use these exactly, which are very exactly. nice. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with. It. But yeah. to me, uh, the little stem behind to those eyes, it will really anchor into the hook shank, yeah. and the goop will really grab those eyes, and they're then going nowhere. And um, and being uh, you know the, those eye to me. He added the right amount of weight into the fly, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, that's why um, I never wanted to change the eyes because, I mean, if he ain't broke, why you want to fix it, right, Tom? Yep. So we need to make a little divot there to hold the eyes, and um, cauterizer tool works really well. Or you can take a fine point scissors. And just and just come in and, and carefully cut, but this cutter I, cauterizer tool is nice and clean. I would say and, that uh, not to cut it with the points of the scissor. If you yeah. don't, if you don't want to use a cauterizer, you know what? You know anyone can try just to move the fibers away a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. And and stick the glue in, and then they just put the ice in place. You know, it's not. 
right here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, I haven't turned the cauterizer on yet, but and you want to be careful with this. You just want to be very gentle and just come in and. There you go. That's, that's about Brilliant. all you need to do. And then I'll do the other side in the same place. Right in the center line. There you go. That's enough. Beautiful. Okay. And then now we use it to goop. So I've got this uh, marine goop, which I found holds eyes really, really well. Yeah, uh, that's liquid liquid fusion also works quite well. I haven't but, tried that one yet, but uh, if yeah, you, if you say that good. it works pretty good, it's pretty good. I'm, so I'm, I'm pretty just sure it does. It. And only that's that's way too much goop that I just put on there. Um, you know, I'll show you. Let's widen this out. That amount of goop that I put on there is too much. And you you only want to put as much as you're gonna use right now because this stuff dries pretty quickly. So I'm looking for my dubbing needle. There it is. So you're gonna take a, a little swirl of goop, and I always use too much, and you're gonna stick it in the eye and kind of twirl your dubbing needle, and your bodkin in there. You know, Tom, that, it really is not a bad idea to put a, a little bit extra goop because in reality, yeah. if you see a little goop on the outside around the eyes, yeah. it's fine. I mean, the fish is not going to just refuse the fly only because <laughs> there is a little goop around the eyes, if you know what I mean. Uh, but the, the, yeah. the, the extra goop is definitely going to... Uh, keep the eyes in place. So, and then you just there stick you that eye all the way in there. I actually should have trimmed that a little bit more. I'm going to trim that other one just a bit. Actually, this one's trimmed shorter, so this one should be okay. Uh, I should not be allowed to use any kind of glue. Why not? Because I get it all over myself. I just yeah. put my hand in I just put my hand in that goop. Now how do you I notice that I'm losing some fibers there? Uh, the reason that you, you're losing the fibers over there because yeah. you are kinda touching the fibers that you cauterize. So yeah. once you do that the those fibers they're not gonna be in place if you know what i mean yeah so you um you might want to be careful when you touch those fibers i found personally uh and you might want to try next one you tie tom uh -huh. to put the fly back into the vise yeah and do it then and do that into the vise you'll see that if you you know with your thumb you're just holding the fibers where they are cauterized and uh -huh. then you apply the glue you'll see that those fibers they're really not gonna go anywhere oh okay and i put it back in the vise here so anyway there is a goopy Peanut butter. That's okay. I'd rather see a little goopy around the hook eye and not to see any goopy around. Trust me on that. <laughs> yep. Now I got to wipe my hand off because I got it all full of goop. Uh, alcohol it will clean that easily, so not a big deal. Yeah, so will time. Yeah. Yeah. Once just it time. Dries, yeah, it'll just go away. And it will show people the full profile of it so there it is great job Tom. great job and the cool thing about this is uh, ep fiber comes in so many different um so yep. many <laughs> so many different uh colors that you can um you can use lots of different colors this is my favorite for fishing deep for striped bass 
This is also an incredibly popular color for tarpon. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the most popular flies uh, in Florida for tarpon. And I find that when I'm fishing striped bass deep on a sinking line, uh, this is, this for whatever reason, is my best color, the purple and black. Well, um, who knows? You know, in reality, uh, they say that fish can see color, fish can see that. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, sometimes it's a, it's a guess for me. Let's put it this way. It works, and I don't change it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, interesting enough, uh, when uh, uh, when I come out with the black and purple colors oh, years back, that color was designed for me uh, for nighttime striper fishing at night. And then I had a, a dealer of mine, uh, down in Florida, uh, that this fellow Captain uh, Zick uh, in uh, Boca Grande, he kept the secret for almost two years. And uh, at some point, I say, I ask him, Zick, I mean, you, I mean, you fishing over there in Boca Grande for tarpon, but you buy from me so many black and purple on a three yard. I mean, what the hell are you doing with it? So it took it two years to, to tell me that, the magic <laughs> of that for tap. Unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and, and John uh, reminded me that it's also an excellent pike fly. And the thing is that you can catch, it's a very, very durable fly. You can catch a lot of pike on this fly without it falling apart, even with those teeth. Yeah, that's for sure. Or bluefish. Or blue well, fish. bluefish. I mean, as you know, in Long Island, we have uh, we have those bluefish, and they destroy flies left and right. Yeah. Um, the the peanut butter or, or any style of a flies done with the P five is a stand up to those uh, teeth. You know, simply because of those fibers basically they will go in between their teeth, so they cannot mm -hmm. really crunch like yeah. they can do with bobtails and feather. Yeah. That's that's no brainer. Yeah. But those yeah. fibers, they go in between, and then it's, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. You you do a couple of dozen of a bluefish, you know, you might lose an eye, you know, so, but <laughs> that. Yeah. And, Jamie, this will work very well for lake trout. This, this fly is going to work any for any fish that eats bait fish, period. Um, um, so, you know, lo it's a great largemouth bass fly. It's a great smallmouth bass fly. Um, and you can tie them smaller for for regular stream trout, I've caught, well, I've caught stream trout on, on, uh, on that size. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm very, I'm very mm -hmm. happy, you know, when I get in the reports and people get in touch with me, you know, fantastic flies. I, I caught this fish. I caught that fish. The fly is very durable and, you know, it rides perfectly rides into the water and things like that. So it really makes me happy that, you know, I contributed through the years into this sport that we all love. And, um, I mean, again, I'm very, very so happy. And I'm sure that uh, from uh, years to come, uh, people will keep on using and have a lot of fun uh, and catch a lot of fish. Yep. They so, sure will. Yeah. Well, thank you, Enrico, for yeah, talking you, me through you're that. You're very welcome. You know, I, I thank you to, to be part of your day, uh, your Monday afternoon, fly time. Yeah. Um, well, very, it's... you know, glad to see you. I mean... Uh, and hopefully one of these days are we going to be out there fishing again? How does that sound? Um, I don't know. You were on a fishing trip with us once, and <laughs> you, kept wanting, you kept wanting to stop and eat and drink wine. <laughs> we said, no, Enrico, no, no, no. We don't, we don't, we don't stop, Enrico. No. Oh, let's, let's relax. Let's have a little wine. Listen, no, those no. Fish, those fish are not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Why are you, <laughs> they're going to be there waiting for us. <laughs> you bring um, your own wine next time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Today it's easy to find uh, a good wine anywhere, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great, great. All right, Enrico. All well, right. 
thank you so much. And, and thank pleasure. you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, thank you. for tuning in today. Um, we love your questions and your enthusiasm. And uh, I think you'll find this flight to be really fun and satisfying to tie. Um, um, I, en I enjoy yeah. tying them. And experiment with colors. <laughs> Absolutely. Experiment with colors. Uh, if you have any question or even any kind, you know, please uh, feel free to contact Tom because he's <laughs> definitely going to help you. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm just I'm happy kidding. to help. Uh, any, I'm happy any, to help. Anyone has any question, you know, whatever, I, I'm always available to anyone. Please get in touch with me. Easy to do that. So it's not really... Uh, although people start telling me that, uh, what are you doing? You're hiding from us now? I mean, uh, we don't see you out there anymore. Well, guys, I'm working. You know what I mean? I'm working for you, for all of you, to come up with some good other stuff. All right, Tom. Thank you very much again. Uh, all right, Good to Enrico. see you. And thank you. See you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Right, take, take care. Bye-bye.